He's attracted to it. Some of you are going through things. You're facing things right now. Hallelujah. You just feel all broke up, all messed up. Look at your neighbor. Say, that's the best place to be. Because that's when he's cut the coast the closest he's ever been to you. When you're broken. Friend, it ain't on the high moments. Glory to God. It's amazing what we call a great service. God may not necessarily call the greatest service. I tell you what God's looking for tonight. He's not coming for any bull. He's wanting some brokenness. He's wanting somebody that's got transparency. Somebody that'll surrender and say, God, that's me, that prophet, that preacher's talking to tonight. That's me, he's bitching it. I got something in my heart towards somebody that I know ain't right. Or God, somebody tonight, the person you may need to release is God himself. You may worship him, but you worship him in distance because somewhere in your heart, you're mad with him. You've got an attitude with him. Even God himself, because he didn't do something the way you thought he ought to did it when he should have did it. Amen. By the time you scheduled him to do it. But I want you to know God can handle your anger tonight. God can handle you being mad with him. God understands and he knows. But he needs you to cooperate with him tonight and obey his voice. Because God declares what good is it to sacrifice and come and then not yield to his call, his move and become broken before him because God always breaks before he builds up he always kills before he heals somebody shout real revival is a funeral look your neighbor tonight and say that preacher come with an anointing of assassination I come to assassinate something I've come to kill something and some of them not. I just, I just hear the Holy Ghost say, I, I, I want to kill that thing. See, see, you know you're in the presence of a real prophet because the Bible tells us in Hosea chapter 6 in verses 5, God said, I have hewed them with my prophets. Amen. Now listen to what he said next. He said, and I have slain them with the words of my mouth. The word hewed means cut it out. God said, I sent my prophets to tell them, cut it out. I, I sent my prophets to say, get it out. Let me circumcise that. Let me take that. Let me cut that away. Let me get you away from Gilgal. Lay that because at Gilgal is where I cut back the flesh. Come on, somebody. Joshua 5 and 9. Because if you don't let me deal with you in Gilgal, I can't take you on to Bethel. Come on, somebody. Where the house of God is, where the presence of God is. For I was glad when they said unto me to let us go to the house of God. Psalm 422. And one, the house ain't some building. It weren't even the tent. In David's day when he said, it was the presence of God that he declared. For he said, how amenable, how beautiful, well beloved and loved are your tabernacles. Psalms 84 more. He said, for my soul and my flesh thirst and long for your tabernacle. Verse 2. God said, there's a place in my presence you'll never know. You can never have until you let me kill what's in you. That I'm trying to keep. Quit trying to resuscitate it. Let me assassinate it tonight. Let him kill it. Somebody say if you'll let him kill it, he'll heal it. And the only way to heal him is killing. Let God do the killing. Exodus 20 verse 19, the Bible said that the children of Israel said to Moses, don't, don't, don't you uh, uh, let God talk to us because uh, you go hear from God and then you tell us what he's saying because if God speaks to us, we'll die. You know, that's why some folks, uh, amen, just want to have cute church. They don't really want to hear from God. They, they love bedtime stories. They love to hear about God. They always love to just hear about God. But hearing about God and hearing from God are two different, uh, amen, glory to God revelations. Uh, amen. When you start hearing from God, God starts speaking. Uh, amen. I found out God comes to kill stuff. Uh, and tonight, if you want God to use you uh, like he's never used you before, uh, if you not only want the miracle power of God to come and affect your life and change uh, the things that concern you, but also, glory to God, uh, flow through you and be a conduit you are that vessel that he can flow through to somebody else to heal them well God said tonight you're going to have to let me you're going to have to let me kill that I've come to kill it somebody shot let him finish it in John 19 and 30 Jesus hung on the cross and he said it's finished Jesus surrendered to that cross that moment of dying that killing And in him submitting to the killer, 
from there, our healing is always past tense. Because by his stripes, by them killing him, we are healed. First Peter 2 24. This might say, finish me off. Isaiah 40 verse 7 said, The grass withereth and the flower fades. Because the Spirit of God bloweth upon it. And surely the people are the grass. Look at your neighbor and whether they're female or male, address them accordingly. Uh, for example, hello, Brother Grass. Isaiah 40 verse 7 said, The people are like grass. Seasons. Spring, summer, fall, winter. The, you know, tonight, the Holy Ghost says, I know you want to know what it feels like to know the seasons of springtime in my presence. I know my people, brother and sister grass, you want to know what it means to flourish in the summer season and see the harvest come in. But if you'll study and if you'll just look in life, the harvest ain't in the summer. The harvest is in the fall. Because God said through His Son Jesus in John chapter 12 in verses 24, except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, somebody look at your neighbor say, but if it dies, it'll bring forth much fruit. Harvest time comes after death. The seed is buried and it dies. And tonight God said, if you let me kill the unforgiveness, if you let me kill the hatred, if you let me kill that secret if you let me kill that lifestyle that you know grieves my spirit, he said tonight. I just heard him say, I'll kill the addiction. I serve a holy addiction to every unclean addiction in the name of Jesus. God wants you to smoke you to put chimneys in your ear. Hello? You think it's the will of God? Some people, some people point their finger at the drunkard. Talk about that old alcoholic, that old drunkard. I mean, you know, alcohol is not a disease, it's a spirit. Wine's a mocker and strong drink is raging, and he that's deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 20, verse 1. The devil puts on a can and a bottle, but wiser, but God said, that scripture, bud, you need wise up, son, because those that drink it are not wise. He said strong drink is raging. Somebody shout spirit. Raging just on emotion. It's a spirit. Come on, somebody. A spirit. But do you know in the New Testament, amen, gluttony? Oh, Lord. Is right alongside of that that said to be sin for as a drunkard. And friend, drug can come in a pill form too. Not just in a liquid form that the alcoholics bound with. We got saints, come on somebody, that are bound with drugs. They have to take one to stay up. They have to take one to go to sleep. Come on, somebody. Amen. We ain't even got enough of faith in the modern church anymore to cast out. Amen. Glory to God. A little headache, much less cancer. Come on, church. Because we're so busy running everywhere else. Amen. We, we run to old uh, uh, Brother Tylenol and, and Sister Advil every time. A little pain, a little. Come on, come on somebody. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? And some of us don't even realize we're addicts after that manner. We go to the local drug dealer who has MD in front of his name and he's been taught and trained to practice medicine because that's all they know most anymore is medicine. I took my daughter to the doctor the other day and, and uh, he didn't even examine her. But immediately he just knew what was wrong so he just started writing prescriptions that I couldn't even read. That we took to the pharmacist that we trusted that he could read. And put the right medication in. Don't even ask questions. You go to Hello? I looked at my wife when we left. I said, my daughter is not coming back to this man again. I said, all he is is a drug dealer with license. 
I said he didn't even examine her. He didn't even put his hands on her. He didn't even put his step to go down. I could have done what he did. If you been, if you went through the third grade and can write your name and spell a little bit, you could have done the same. I said, and I saw something in his eyes that grieved my spirit. I said, you ain't taking her back. Four days later, found out he himself almost overdosed and had to be sent on. Come on. We thank glory to God it's just bondage if it's from the street somewhere. Amen. Glory to God sold in secret under the table somewhere. But that's a lot of saints. Come on, somebody. That's bound up. Do you realize in Revelation 18 and 23, in the last day setting, God warned, amen, that sorceries would be the reason of deception of families and nations. Sorcery comes from the word Hallelujah pharmacia From where we get our modern word pharmacy from Friend there's a spirit of witchcraft loose And it's even in the body of Christ Come on somebody Hallelujah Amen when we go to the doctor And the doctor tells you Well you're depressed You need this antidepressant Who don't get depressed? That's just part of living Who don't get depressed? Amen. But how do you deal with it? Isaiah 6 to 1 and 3 calls it a spirit of heaviness, a devil. Come on, church. Now, I know some's arguing and said chemical imbalance, but this stuff ain't even been proven. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? There's some of us trying to treat a spirit, hallelujah, with man's idea and man's idolatry. Amen. Glory to God that brings increase because we got so much medicine, all this propaganda. Hallelujah. Hey, you ever wonder why everybody gets flu shot, gets flu? This is a business thing. Come on. We got saints that won't even take a multivitamin because I ah, ain't not do all that. But son, they'll pop that pill. Come on. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Health is better than healing. Anymore, you, and I'm not talking against your doctor if he happens to be or she happens to be. A good one. Come on, somebody. But the majority of them, they ain't there to, 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 to help, glory to God, or to heal. They're there to get you hooked. I, mean, I sent my wife. My wife went to the doctor one time for a checkup, just a mere checkup. And she come out there crying and called me on the phone and said, Marvin, they got me going to, down there to the drugstore getting all kind of drugs. And, and because uh, they said, I need an antidepressant for this and an antidepressant for that. And, and all the side effects, if you watch them long commercials, they'll tell you how great this medication is. They'll take about two seconds to do that. But the the next three minutes, all the warnings. If you happen to die, please stop taking this and go see your doctor. What? And we got saints that's in bondage to it. Come, come, come on, anybody here on go. I asked my wife, I said, give me the phone number to that place. I called up and the nurse got on the phone. I wanted to talk to the top nurse because they wouldn't let me talk to the doctor. I said, look, my wife went over there for just a checkup. I said, she's come out of there with every kind of pill, with every kind of prescription for stuff. No. I said, ma'am, you ever get depressed? She said, yes, sir. I said, I do too, but I take the gospel, I take me a praise bill, I put on a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, Isaiah 61 verses 3, so I don't know what the world does, but I ain't of this world, and I said, my wife is in a rout back to your drug dealing doctor's office, and you take that prescription back and you go give them to the doctor and say, Mrs. Booth's husband said you are a drug dealer. And you need to go back to school. Because when I was a boy, the doctors I knew growing up is the kind you could go to their house. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. And they didn't just pop a pill in you or shoot a shot in you. My God, they examined you. They tried to find out what was wrong. Come on. Hallelujah. But now they just write scribble on paper, throw you down there and get you all drugged up. And we got people in church can't even amen, get in the presence of God because they And we have become addicted to a substance, a feeling.
Hallelujah. I tell you, there's one substance I'm addicted to tonight. It's found in Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm not preaching against medicine. There's a time for it. But there's some of the stuff your doctor, amen, that the cross is giving you. Amen. God of God that ain't helping you. It's actually killing you. And people have become addicted to a thing, a high instead of a most high. People are getting addicted to the Neverland experience, cloud mountain. When God said all that is nothing but a counterfeit for the feeling and the experience you can have that's authentic and with longevity and everlasting that comes from my presence. Come on, somebody. Man, there's a move of the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. They can bring you back to a high. Amen. Ain't no matter how. You, you may be as low, glory to God, as a snake's bed in a wagon wheel rut. But I'm telling you, there's a high in the most high because he said, glory to God, in Psalm 16 and 11, in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. What are we going to do with this scripture in Acts 13 and 72? The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Ghost. Somebody said joy and the Holy Ghost. I'm afraid some of us can't receive that place in the Holy Ghost where there's a high hat because we've lost some joy and we're trying to do what man says to get it back. But I want you to know tonight there's a joy juice being served tonight. Joe's bar is open. Drinks are on the house. New wine is here right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Be a lot But if you let him kill, he'll heal. They that summon tears, reap with joy. Psalms 126 and 5. Modern Christianity wants joy without weeping. Hello. She wants the joy of the Lord to come, but she don't want to weep before the Lord and repent. And turn from the things he says turn from. Listen, I'm, I'm going to try to close with this. And I want y'all to keep playing. I'll wear a musician out. I'm one myself. Sometimes I get on the drums. I don't ever get up. Hallelujah. I start, I start, I'll be doing just what I'm doing, but I'll be behind the drums. Listen, I'm like, I'm like Elisha. When the minstrel plays, I hear the word of the Lord. Come on, the hand of the Lord comes on me. 2 Kings 3.15. Again, you see exhibit him before you deny a man that don't know what he's doing. I, I have no idea what I'm doing, but like Abraham, by faith I go out and I will so journey into a promised land. Come on. Hebrews 11 verse 8 and 9. There's a promise in this room that I go to manifest. Somebody go get their healer tonight after they let Jesus kill something. The kingdom comes before the healing. The breaking down comes before the building up. Hosea 6 verses 1. Return unto me, saith the Lord. Though I have torn, I will heal. Though I have spit, I will bind up. Verse 2, and after two days I will revive you. And in three days I will raise you up and you shall live before me in my sight. Verse 3, and then shall you know whether you follow to know the Lord. Then verse 5, as we've done quoted, for I have hewed them by my prophets and I have slain them by the words of my mouth. Well, old school Pentecostal folks would be slain in the spirit. Something died. No. They went down one way and come up a different way. That's why the old saints called it being slain. Because when you went down in his presence, his presence overwhelmed you like the song they're going to sing again. And sing. When his presence overwhelmed you, there's a slain that takes place. There's a death that takes place. Paul said, I died daily. 1 Corinthians 15, 32. Then in verse 33, he said, I fought a beast at Ephesus. And if you'll study the church at Ephesus, that there was a demonic spirit that he dealt with there. Glory to God. Paul said, I died daily. And that's why I had the power over the devil. I died in my flesh. Your biggest enemy ain't some devil. It's your flesh. It's that part of you you don't want to relinquish rights to and give it up. 
and let it go and repent of it. And God says, I may have given you a harsh, hard word, some of you tonight. I may have been torn in you. I may have did a righteous ripping in you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. A tearing away, a breaking down, a killing's taking place. Hallelujah. He said, but I'll bind up, I'll heal, I'll mend. Oh, glory to God. He said, and I'll revive you. Ain't it amazing that the scripture said he would revive after he kills? Revival is a funeral. Preaching. 
and other services. When God says, I'll hew my people with my promise. I'll kill them with the words of my mouth. Hosea 6, 5. Real revival brings forth a kill. Create within me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Created within me a 